Well, we will go on right now at the point we left it in the previous video number one of Mass World 2D. As you remember, we had a complete definition of the geometry, so we are now in this second step, which, uh, which consists of uh, the assignment, the selection of the materials that you will put in every element uh, of this uh, cross section of the motor. So, let's go there. Well, you can see that this is quite simple, it doesn't create any trouble because you've got all the names of the different elements you have created before. And in this case you only have to select a material you want to put in any element and then after doing after doing that you only have to exit and the everything will get recorded if you accept recording after doing that. So let's go to a simple example just to see how it is done and then we will go to the most complicated thing in, in the design that is the definition of boundaries and uh, external connections and electrical circuits. Well, let's go for instance to the air gap. You can see here that we've got air gap 1, air gap, air gap 2 and bond. Band is something we define in the middle of the air gap, as I told you before. Air gap is divided into three, uh, three different parts. This is done to, fac to facilitate the design of the machine and also because we are trying to um, do an, an transient analysis and we have to define motion very well, so this is why air gap is divided in three parts. Of course, material of the air gap is air. So, you select the object, it is done. I'm not going to the, to uh, deselect everything and, and repeat it because it is something really, really simple. You select the name of the object you want to assign a material, and then you go here these are the materials of the database you know from previous uh, videos and you simply choose it and the properties of the material appear here well, then you select uh, in that case you have activated some functions here and you can assign the material well let's see another another type of example the shaft the shaft is done on stainless steel so you select it here this type of steel and it is assigned to this part of the machine the rest of the elements are made of copper and you also have to define the background background is everything that is inside this square that appears here in this case background is vacuum you can choose also air and it doesn't make uh, any change okay we exit and we go on with boundaries and sources this part of uh, uh, setting up the boundaries and sources is where you define the connections of the electrical elements and also the external voltage sources and uh, the references for current in the stator uh, you also put the end ring as an, as an external connection it is also the point where you uh, can uh, put uh, boundary conditions to the 
finite element pro pro program and, and in fact is it is uh, the part of the program with, where you get the maximum complication because you have to deal with both uh, electromagnetic boundaries uh, that you have to apply and also uh, to define the electrical circuits well now it is completely done uh, it is quite difficult to do it from a black uh, model so we are going to do it to, to do it and on this uh, on this the this complete uh, model starting for the most simple simple condition that is the what we call the boundary condition you know we, we are working with uh, magnetic fields so we need to define a boundary condition uh, which means uh, we have to define where our where our problem is going to end in fact we have to define where the magnetic field is going to be nil because if we don't define that uh, it is supposed the problem is an infinite problem so this uh, boundary condition is what we call we, what, what we have we've called here uh, contorno you should have called that uh, however you want and it simply means that you are defining the parts of the space the region of the space what do you decide or let's say not decide where, where do you know that your problem is not going to be solved because it is not necessary or because in the case of magnetic fields your magnetic field is negligible in that part in that case the boundary is the, is the external surface of your motor in this external surface it is supposed that you won't have any magnetic uh, flux line it is not true in fact because you will have some liquid flux outside here but to solve the problem you need to define a boundary and that boundary is telling Max Maxwell that vector potential of magnetic field is going to be nil in all this red region this will imply, from the point of view of analyzing the problem later, that all the magnetic flux line will appear inside this magnetic region. In fact, no flux line will appear outside the boundary condition. So this is the first, the first thing you must, you must do before doing anything else to connect uh, elements one with the other. Well, second simple connection, second simple uh, condition is to put in, in a short circuit the gate. In this case, we have defined this condition as something that is a passive and connected conductor. What, what is the way to do that? Okay, the way to do that is to select a certain object. I'm not going to do it because then the video should be really, really long. You have to select the, the object you're working with and then you can do it by clicking well, I've selected the end ring. Then you go out here and press the right button if you want to set free your cursor again. And you go to assign boundary condition. This boundary condition must be a value, must be a source, or must be an end connection 
if it is a value, what we are doing is what we did before to assign new potential to the boundary of the whole model. In this case, that is the cage, we should add an end connection. And when pressing end connection, of course I cannot do it because it is already done, I will go to this part of the program, I will give a name to this condition that for me is the end ring, el anillo de cortocircuito, and then you check this as a passive and connected conductor. Okay? So, in this case it is quite clear. I think I, I'm going to open something for you because uh, otherwise, on the contrary, it will be impossible to, for you to understand uh, how things work in, in this part. Let's go to another different uh, boundary condition. Hmm? Remember we have seen value, we have seen end connection and we are going to see right now what the program in this case call a source. Under the name of source it appears everything. It appears the connections, uh, uh, the external connections, uh, the values of the voltage sources, uh, and, and all, all kind of things. So let's go for instance to the R phase. This R phase, this group, this group of, of coils of the R phase I've called R1, is something that need, needs an external connection. What's the way for doing that? Well, we select uh, the element. In this case, we should have done uh, selecting. We deselect everything. We should have done this. We select the object by clicking. I don't remember where it was located. Let's say it is here and here. We click with the right mouse here and then we assign a source. Source can be solid or sheet. I've said sheet with long e. Solid means that uh, you are going to consider that conductors have skin effect. Uh, so in this case so uh, the source should be a strand source. We can see it here. Once you select select sheet sheet uh, source for R1 for R1 sorry as an external connection, you are telling that these elements on these elements are going to be formed by infinite cables. So you, you won't have any kind of skin ef effect here. Well, once this is done, what you need to do is to, to define the polarity of the winning. How is it defined? Let me move it here. I've selected what I call group R, group R1 input and group R1 output. This is group R1 input and this is group R1 output. I have to put a polarity for the current, so I've, I'm giving names that are coherent and are easy to 
to go on with the analysis of, of the system. So this uh, group R1 input is positive for me and group R1 output is negative for me. And here it is the place where, where I'm defining the total turns that I vote in this winning that for this machine it is 96 I have to define also the number of parallel branches okay then we've seen this case um, how to assign boundaries and sources the, you can see here is the complete definition of, of the machine because I've got the overall boundary condition for the Max, Maxwell, not, not, not Maxwell, the name of the program, Maxwell equations, Maxwell magnetic field equations. This is a boundary condition to solve differential equations. I've got something I've called and drink that is the way of short circuiting the elements of the gate. This coil one and coil two, you can skip them because they are these small things that you can see here. This is coil number one. It is something that was inside this design to measure the magnetic field in the air gap but it, it is not a normal thing so coil 1 and coil 2 can be perfectly suppressed and if I take out zoom you can see the rest of uh, the elements that simply are the windings you can see I've got four groups of coils in every phase and you can see them in this part this is group 1, group 2, group, th group, group 3, sorry, group 4 and they are uh, defined in the same way we've seen in the theoretical classes so in all the cases I've selected a source a sheet source or solid source, it depends on, on what you are doing and then in the winnings you can see different cores but, but always 96 turns and the references for the input and output current so this is the way we assign boundaries and sources next video will show you the external circuit and the schematic uh, capture that the program allows you to do to connect everything with the voltage source and to put also measurements of voltages and currents <laughs>